Hello and welcome to my video. Today is a 6 months or 10 months update of the X20 Pro from Autumn Stack. I have plenty of fun with it and I have made loads of little projects which I'm really proud of. And over the last like 10 months it has already made its money's worth. But Dial Laser is not completely maintenance free. Now I'm not going into like you know cleaning the lens or cleaning the uh, air intake and all that because a lot of video has been done already. Now Dial Laser use a lens which the laser goes through but that lens is just a protection to stop smoke and things go into the laser chamber so autumn stack last month came out with the lens replacement because a lot of you guys use the laser machine a lot more than i do and the lens crack when the lens crack the laser no longer focus properly and that's why it fails to cut um, instead of paying the Atom stack like you know 30 quid for uh, three lens and it become a replacement part because you need to replace it every so often doesn't matter how clean your lens is eventually the laser will cause some damage to the lens and you do have to replace it they do say that if you keep it clean keep it dust free there's less chance of the laser marking that protective lens i'm all for saving money and i hate wasting money um, if i don't need to so i find this um, ebay seller who sell a uh, lens basically just a piece of glass and i'm trying to fit that into the brass um, fitting um, this one only costs £2.30 something on eBay or £2.50. Um, in the US, this is like $2. So if I can use this to replace the lens, then even better. Another reason why I'm making this video is because I'm selling this machine now. I find that I'm outgrowing the machine. Um, yes, it can cut very thick wood. Now, this one is actually from um, a pallet, you know, where they put the goods on for transportation. It's kind of a recycled piece of wood. Now, this is the original thickness of the wood, and you can see that it's quite thick. And the atom stack, no matter how many parts you go, it will not cut through this thick piece of wood. So basically, you have to get a plan planner and then plan it like half down, and then I can use it. The other thing I can do is use a bandsaw to uh, kind of uh, retimber it. Now I don't have a thickness slicer, so I can't get it to the precise thickness that I want. So in terms of like, you know, price to uh, power ratio for dial laser, I think the X20 Pro is fantastic. If you don't need to cut anything beyond, let's say 10 mil of a oak or something like that. And if you want to cut plywood, it'll be even thinner because the glue in there, the laser doesn't really want that. So um, I'm in the process of selling this machine and getting my next one. I don't want to spoil anything. So um, once I sold this machine, then the next one will come and I can make more video for you guys to see what I'm moving on to next. Let me show you what I mean by uh, the lens getting uh, destroyed and what are the telltale signs that you can see um, that your, your lens is on the way out. Okay, sorry if it is a bit noisy because the laser machine is on and I got the air pump and all that going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I see uh, behind the protective lens here um, when I start to cut something. Now I'm just going to use a very slow speed and low power just to show you what I see through the window. Now it doesn't look like that when I first started with this machine. It's only happened like you know recently. So I'm going to press start. Okay, now I'm zoomed into the chamber right there. Um, I, what I can see here is that it's no longer a single dot. The light tends to diffuse sideways and also there is a bigger um, dot circle around the actual focusing point. Now that wasn't like that before. And um, is, I think this is because the lens is not clear anymore. And hopefully my $2 lens or £2 lens is going to fix this problem. Okay, it's going to be a bit more clear right now. Hopefully you can see it. It's almost like there is a uh, 4 to 5 mil cir size circle around the actual dot itself. Now the dot should be about, let's say, less than a mil. And because all the light is uh, deflected... Ah, oh, there we go. Now, don't get me wrong, the machine still cut and the dot size is still... Now, you can see the line is still clean. So, my lens is not cracked or anything like that. 
but because I'm uh, selling the machine, I want it to be at the best condition for the next buyer. So I'm going to change the lens today. So I'm going to take this off the um, laser engraver and now I'm going to show you on the bench what the lens actually looks like. Okay, to take off the laser head is quite easy. Literally just unplug the two things on top. So unplug the electronic and unplug the air assist. And that's it. Turn the knob in the front to release it. And then it should just slide all the way out. I think it's catching on this. Obviously I'll do it with one hand, that's why a bit tricky right there, but it's not that difficult. So here what you need to do is take off the filter housing and then take out the air assist um, shield. And you will need a tool, which is like a hexagon key thing. Okay, so once you take away the filter housing, you will see that the laser inside is covered with this air assist nozzle. You can't leave this attached, but I'll just take it off. And that's it. So now you expose the front part of the laser. Now, you might need to use a flathead screwdriver to take it off, but mine is already loose. I do clean it. I do clean it every so often, but the actual lens is actually at the back. The front is just a protective brass with a glass in the middle. I don't know how close we can focus to this piece of glass, but here we are. Okay, I hope I can show you what my lens looks like. It catches on the reflection from my light. You can see the middle of the glass. There is a spot right there. Now, I have used different things to clean it. I have used isopropyl alcohol, I can use vinegar, I can use water, but this is not dirt. This is actually engraving on the glass itself. I mean, over time, I don't use my laser to 100%. Anyway, I don't want, I want to make it last. But I guess just with four uh, dial laser units inside one, it's just powerful enough to engrave the glass. Now, if, the, if there is dirt or dust particle on the glass itself, sometimes the laser will heat that dust and heat up the glass itself. And that's why it's engraved. But I have been so careful with my lens, but still, it happens. You can see that right there? So that is what's stopping the laser from, I guess, forming a sharp dot. I have seen glass which was broken in half, cracked, and a lot worse than mine in condition. And there's another brass ring inside the casing, so I'm going to attempt to open that. I think that is what is holding down the piece of glass in the middle. Now, I mean, Autumn Stack is selling this for 30 quid and you get three of these. So you just unscrew this in replace. And um, this is a $2 fix that I'm trying to do right here. Now, I'm not going to be very careful with this right now because I know the lens needs to be replaced and everything. I mean, worst come to worst, I just need to pay the 30 quid, right? So what's the worst that can happen? Now he's turning. So the inner ring actually comes apart. He just twisted down. Oh, easier that way now. Okay, so the casing and there's a brass ring inside and now have access to the actual glass itself inside. There is a white ring around it. It does look like some kind of glue or gasket. Not sure what that is. <clears throat> oh, 
Well, he's kind of stuck. Yeah, definitely. I think he's just some kind of glue all around it. Maybe a silicon ring. There you go. So that's the piece of glass that I took out. I don't really know what this piece of material is. I think it's just a thin slice of um, silicon. And now I'm going to leave that piece in because I'm not going to risk not having a gasket in there. Well, I got the old piece of glass here and the new piece of glass right here and I'm going to pick it up from the side. I don't know. <laughs> It's going to be hard to look, hard to focus with the camera, but there you go, a $2 piece of glass, right there. And I'm going to put this into the slot. And then I'm going to put this ring back in there. And this is all you do, you just keep turning it until it goes all the way down. There you go. Now I have, now I have a new one. There we go. For the purpose of this video, I am not going to glue it down or put like silicon and stuff like that. I mean, there is a layer of silicon already from the remaining of this glass. But once it's tightened down with this, the glass is not going any anywhere anytime soon. So now it's just the reverse. I'm putting it back in. Now I'm checking the inside focusing lens and you can tell by the reflection, there is nothing in the middle of that lens. Unlike the old piece of glass where there's a spot. So I think this is doing a good job protecting the lens at the back. I'm just going to hand tight it because it's not going to come off anytime soon. And there we go. That's the lens replaced. Now does he cut? Or does it engrave as well as the original? So let's find out. So now I'm going to just put everything back how it was. Now, if this does work, this will be cheapest repair ever. Two dollars. That's it. That's the new glass inside. I'm going to put it back in the machine and do some test engraving for you guys. Okay, time to find out if I have broke my machine. So I'm going to press start. Okay, so far so good. And I don't see the big round dot anymore. I only see a single dot, which is encouraging. We still have a bit of a diffraction on the side. But definitely that big round dot is missing. What it means is um, the light which was reflected by... Yep, so that's better. So what it means is that the big round dot used to be uh, the wasted laser, I would say, is now more concentrated in a single dot. Well, there's not much difference between the cut lines, but like I say, mine wasn't 
But like I say, my lens wasn't cracked or anything like that. It was working anyway, but because I'm selling the machine, uh, I want to make sure the lens is clear. So there you have it. Glass replaced for £2.30 or $2. Okay, you don't have to buy a 30 quid three pieces of the brass fitting. Yes, it's convenient. You just twist it out, put it back in. But I can buy tens of these and just replace it every so often myself. As I show you on the video. I hope you find my information useful. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe to my channel. Put in the comment section for your own experience. If you have cracked lens, if you have tried it, if it works, it might help other viewers to do the same modification in the future. I'm not sure if this will work in any other dial laser, but the concept is the same. If they use the same fittings, fantastic. If not, there might be a bit of a more involvement in terms of gluing the lens on. Um, throughout the replacement, it was quite easy. I didn't even touch the new lens, so I know it's completely clean. But this one here, no matter what I do to the lens, I couldn't get the mark off. I think it's actually engraved onto the glass itself. So thank you very much for watching. Can't wait to see you next time with more interesting gadget. Bye bye. And just for a bit of fun, every video I'm going to include a mystery um, product, which I personally enjoyed. And you know what, actually, this is not bad. I think this is actually quite fun. And what is impressive to me so far is that how easy it is to use. So the drone itself, this is a mini drone. I, pref I think this is more like an indoor drone. It's made of plastic and it's quite durable. Now all the propeller is inside the case. So it's less likely to get damaged. I mean, you can put your fingers through and it can hit your finger as such. But if you're flying around, knocking into things, so far I haven't done any damage to the drone itself. It doesn't come with the battery for the controller, so you need three, uh, three AAA battery. It comes with a USB cable to charge your um, the two batteries which comes with it. And you've got a couple of spare uh, pops in there. Instruction-wise, they got a booklet in here. And um, if you have tried drone before, it's quite um, self-explanatory. If not, don't worry, this is really, really easy to, to play with. There's no camera on the drone, this is really just a fly around toy. But battery into the back of the drone, make sure it clips in. One long press to turn it on. As soon as you turn it on, make sure it goes onto a flat surface because now they go through the calibration uh, for the geo sensor which is in there. On your remote control, just power it on. And once the flash flash finished, that means that this is ready to fly. Green LED is for the front of the drone, blue is for the back of the drone. To fly this drone, you can actually uh, throw it up in the air. For example, let me show you, this is quite fun. So it has sensor in there to sense the position. So if you throw it up, So it is quite stable by itself. You do need to do some minor adjustment, like up and down adjustment. But overall, this is quite stable in um, a flying environment. So you can catch it, flip it to stop it, and then you put it back down. And then it's ready to fly again. So yeah, you can throw it up and do some party tricks with it. But there's also a one button takeoff. And then you can do one button uh, landing. So one button take off, one button landing. It's stable in the air, so now it's time to have some fun. Okay, to change the speed, you can just do it on the remote. So this is the fastest it will go. And you can do some party tricks like flips. And 
And there you have it. This is my... And there you have it. This is my mystery product for this video. I'll put a link in the description and you can have a look if you're interested in this kind of toy.